Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. We got Mitex starting the upper left-hand corner as the white Zerg. Upper right-hand corner, we have Rancor starting as the yellow Zerg. This is going to be on Turbine, which I did a long time ago. You have an in-base natural expansion, two, two creep colonies that actually spread creep rather rapidly for Zerg towards the front. So it is possible to get a, defense, a defensive sunken. Point being, I feel like there's opportunities for creative play, which might favor Rancor, which might be why he chose this map. It is also a three-player map, which means you can kind of eliminate where your opponent is based on kind of the open shell game, where it's like, okay, if they're not here, they're not, you know, and if Overlord's with Overlord crossing pattern. <clears throat> Looks like both players are going to get the Overlord scout in each other's base immediately. And we'll see if Mitak opens up for a 12 pool once again. Previously, Rancor, usually Rancor favors the nine pool style of play. And he has a lot of success with it. Building an Overlord this time, so potentially Overpool. Maybe wanting to go for something more safer. I, I honestly want to see him to go 12 pool more often. Possibly even go 12 hatch on this map, given its, given its architecture. <clears throat> so Overlord finishes. Additional Larva being produced. So it looks like at the very least... And somehow Rancor may be doing some mineral boosting or something, or just choosing better patches, but he's up economically already. Not sure how that happened. By a significant margin, too. Up on drones. And it looks like he is going to go for the in-base 12 hatch. And he is going to go up against a 12 pool, which is going to give him the build order lead. And I'm curious if Mitex just unfamiliar with this map, which makes sense. This is kind of idle drones. It's odd. How many mineral patches here? Looks like we have the standard nine. Rancor dropping that pool. Should be, as long as he produces Zerglings, he should be able to defend it. And it's, again, kind of a smaller gap for Zerglings to get through. So it's like ramped and smaller, and although they can't attack those creep colonies. Kind of work things that way. So Rancor going to have an economic lead. Mitek going ahead and grabbing gas. He's going to go for an in-base this is confusing to me. This shows me that Mitek just is not familiar with this map at all. Because there's absolutely no reason to go for an in-base 12 hatch. Or an in-base hatchery. When, yeah, he just doesn't know the map. Because there's no reason to do that when your other hatchery is like right here. So I think he just doesn't know the architecture of the map. And he's just going to try to play with a Zergling Flood. Rancor going to spot it though immediately. And should know what... He's just going to have a stronger economy to work with. It looks like he is morphing to Lair. Dropping a creep colony already. Zerglings making their way out. So that's going to be six Zerglings. And six Zerglings to counter. So all Rancor has to do is weather the Zerglings from Mitak With an Overlord overhead to know exactly how many Zerglings he needs to build and when. And the Lair will complete and he'll have a stronger economy. He's up one drone right this second. And with the something colony... Where it's at. Yeah, this is... Honestly, I feel like this is a... I think this would have worked on pretty much any other map. But for Midtech, trying to do this on this map in particular... Because you can place this sunk colony out of forward position, it just feels like a bad build order. Maybe you can still make it work, though. And Rancor already mining. He's up three drones and currently mining at the natural. But yeah, he's going to be able to see... As long as he keeps an eye on this corner, he's going to be able to even see the exact amount of Zerglings that are coming out of both these locations to know how many Zerglings he needs to produce has 15 drones right now and probably can stop right there. He's going to be able to get that layer down. So yeah, Mitek's going to have to make a run at this. He's waiting on speed to finish. Spire morphing. So yeah, it's going to come down to whether Mitek can punch through with this. And given the fact that that something colony is right there and can just assail those Zerglings, even if they try to go for the creep colony, and there's kind of like the Thermopylae gap... Is that the right location? Spartan attack. Gauntlet. The Zerglings can only come in piecemeal. <clears throat> so Midtech now sending all the Zerglings up. One of them has broken through. Another drone coming off the line to actually engage and attack as well. And did Rancor flub this? The Zerglings actually able to sneak through. They're going to transfer out of the natural expansion. One drone down. However, the Spire's still on the way. So Rancor just needs to reestablish some control here. He's still got plenty of Zerglings to work with. More Zerglings are making their way across from Mitak now. 
engaging attacks. More Zerglings blocking. And now Rancor just, yeah, needs to plug. He's got a huge economic lead. Might even want to resaturate some of these drones if he has a moment. The additional location. Now more Zerglings waiting at the breach. Looking to break through. Is Rancor going to hold it? This is a lot of Zerglings waiting. The rest of the Zerglings punching through. Now working on that sunken colony. Rancor not having the defenses. Pulling drones and Zerglings to buy time for the Mutalisks to spawn. And just backing all of these units into the corner. Knowing he has a large enough economic lead. The Zerglings flooding through. Trying to get better matchups. It looks like they are getting on top of some of these drones. But they've got to wipe out practically every drone. And the Mutalisks are going to spawn momentarily. Another creep colony being dropped. The Zerglings not able to critically take out the Spire. They're able to interrupt the economy for a bit. But now an Evolution Chamber being dropped from Mitak. Zerglings being hunted, but the base currently breached by Rancor, of Rancor. Economically way ahead. It's a bit of a cleanup operation. Mitak needs to buy time. The drones huddled up in the corner. It looks like they are going to be predicted, but more Zerglings flooding forward. Are we going to have more Zerglings to block that gap? And as long as these Zerglings keep applying pressure, that is going to buy Mitak some time. Because Rancor is going to be pinned at his base. So the Zerglings trying to punch through, not able to do so. Rancor resaturating this naturally. He hasn't got his second gas up yet. I think Mitak now realizing, oh hey, there's a natural over here. He's going to have a huge larva lead because he's got three hatcheries to work with. But he's got basically half the drone count. Plus one weapons being upgraded. More Zerglings making their way across. Actually, I wonder if one Mutalisk might even be able to peel off. And But here's the other thing. Additional drones need to be built by Mitak just to try to defend. There's also some Overlords exposed. They've got a long way to travel. And these Zerglings going to take free damage. Mitak needs to stay on his toes. Rancor continuing to macro up to 17. Still hasn't grabbed a second gas. He's currently just wandering around picking off Zerglings. I think on just an attack move right there. So with plus one weapons, I think he wants to be able to punch through these spore colonies sooner rather than later. Wandering up with this Overlord again to kind of check what's going on. He's going to be able to maybe get a free drone kill. Takes a little bit of damage on the Mulus, but it really doesn't matter because Midtac still make, made no movements to go towards Lair. He has droned up, though, to equalize the economy. So Rancor needs to get a move on. Either building an air fleet, out macroing... Does have that second gas now up online. Looking for opportunities to... Actually, I think this, with a decent amount of micro, this hatchery is exposed. Also, the evolution chamber. I think this is realized, so Midtac's going to go ahead and try to drop. And now, it's overlord hunting time. Mule's trying to find the overlords there. Able to find one overlord. Just making sure additional bases, and there's other overlords, actually, that are currently out in the field that could potentially get picked off. And they're going to find an... Uh, they're going to... Yeah, on this attack path. Going to be able to spot additional if they're aware. And it looks like they are. The Zerglings wanting to go for a counterattack. But there are two sunk colonies now on the front for Rancor. Midtech in the red. So he's not going to be able to... So on top of being in an economic deficit. Being at half the supply of Rancor. Lost a lot of overlords. I think that was clever on Rancor's part. He was up in here and he's like, Okay, I don't see any overlords. Which means they're somewhere out on the map. So let's go ahead and find them and kill them. Mutalisk now sweeping in. Hanging out at the main. Hydralisk then being produced from Midtech. So he wants to try to do the counter ground force army. But with the plus one weapons, Rancor is going to have too much too quickly. And should be able to counter this. Sweeping around. At a certain point, they can just pound through the spore colonies as well. Able to pick off additional drones and ignore the spore colony damage. Keeping that light. Hydra is starting to filter in now. Plus one weapons being upgraded, but that evolution chamber is still exposed. And the Hydra is eating damage actually off the bounce glaives. Actually, the bounce glaives going all the way to the spore colony sometimes. So evolution chamber down. No more sunken or no more spore colonies. No upgrades. And these mutal oh wow. Nice micro to one shot. These Hydralisks, which means they're not going to hit the critical mass sufficient, and Mitek going to GG. So now Rancor taking game two. So we're going to go to a final match to decide it all.
to see who advances and who is eliminated from BSL Season 14. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.